the truth is out there. It is one of the world's greatest mysteries, Scotland's legendary Loch Ness Monster. So does the lake creature actually exist? Well, if you ask one man, he'll tell you it is in fact no myth. Every day it's flaunted in front of your face. Hundreds of people in the valley say they are hearing voices in their heads. You just choose to ignore it. Belief can be a powerful force. No one knows that better than the people who are sure they've seen Bigfoot. Real accounts. He says he knows who's playing mind games. Rogue government officials that are uh, sponsoring this. Um, also corrupt business officials and um, private citizens. From real people. Hundreds of people turned out tonight for the unveiling of a very controversial statue. Yeah, it really is. The Satanic Temple of Detroit revealed the one-ton bronze statue. It's time for you to take a swim. I'm just excited to see my Lord and Savior Baphomet represented in such glorious Italian stone. I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. In the dark waters. The Dark Waters channel is for entertainment purposes only. Although information in these stories can be traced back to relevant and true sources, Dark Waters strongly discourages its viewers, listeners, and subscribers from visiting the site of incidents and encounters discussed or revealed on the show. In other words, we will not be held responsible if you are attacked by a dogman, molested by a Bigfoot, bitten by vampires, chased by chupacabras, abducted by aliens, accosted by the men in black, investigated or arrested by the local law enforcement, CIA, FBI, NSA, EPA, BLM, or another alphabet group, whether on U.S. soil or abroad. Thank you for tuning in, and enjoy the show. Many of you have questions about what the dog man is and where it comes from. As a child of native blood, my father and grandfather would share stories with me of how things came to be. Many of you have heard of the story of the great spirit and how the dog was created, molded of clay, and life was breathed into it. However, there's another part of that story. And this story starts with the coyote. My grandfather would tell me as a young boy, Beware of the coyote, for the coyote only seeks to deceive and destroy. And as I got older, he would tell me that certain people, deceptive and evil people, possess the spirit of the coyote. Oftentimes, my grandfather was right about these people. And as time passed, they were deceivers and sowed the seeds of destruction. It was not until I was 18 years old that my father and grandfather set me down and began to enlighten me about the true ways of the coyote. This dog man that many of you speak of is the embodiment of the coyote spirit. We don't call it dog man. The name we use will not be shared with you. For it is our belief that if that name is spoken, you will draw it onto you. When a great spirit began the process of creation, the coyote was there as well, lurking and watching. The great spirit began to shape and form figures made of clay. He took his time carefully molding and crafting man, woman, and many animals that roam this earth today. And after days and days of labor, where he delicately molded and devoted every ounce of his attention to the slightest detail, the great spirit took a break and went to gather firewood to bake the clay and breathe life into it. While he was gone, the coyote snuck in taking one of the clay figures and molding it after himself with the head of a coyote and the body of a man, then carefully returned and placed it among the rest. And upon returning, the great spirit created a fire of eternal flames and began to harden each clay creation. Then one by one, he breathed life into them and set them free upon the earth. When he got to the figure that was manipulated by the coyote, he realized that he had not made this creation and summoned the coyote before him. Immediately, the coyote protested, saying, Why can I not have a creation made in my image, as you have man and woman created in yours? And after careful consideration, 
The great spirit decided to allow Coyote to have his creation. So it came to pass that the Coyote, the great deceiver, had a living creation made in his image. Time passed, and the Coyote's creation grew in hunger and consumed human flesh. It moved freely across the lands, devouring and destroying, until the great spirit finally had enough. He took the abomination and his offspring and put them to sleep, locking them away until the end of days. And then the great spirit charged the coyote, saying that you can only release them when the days of man were nearing the end. Many of you see Dogman as entertainment and don't realize that it is a sign of things to come. Humanity faces its gravest hour. And as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. A few days after sharing that story with me, Grandfather began to tell me stories that were passed down to him from his father and his father's father. Stories about the First Nations peoples encountered with these creatures you call Dogman. I was told that millennia ago, there was a village of men, evil men, who loved to rape, kill, burn, and destroy. These men were exiles from various tribes and lands. They lived together with no women among them. And over time, they grew more and more evil. Until one night, these men were in their village and began to hear strange sounds coming from the woods. Sounds so frightening that it scared even these evil men. They took to their spears and arrows only to be attacked by creatures of the night. These animals jumped down on them from trees with sharp claws and eyes that glistened red in the light of the moon. The men fought throughout the night, each of them falling one after the other until the numbers dwindled from 200 down to one. And at first light, the creatures retreated to the woods, leaving one man alive. This man's name was Anime. Gravely injured, Anime traveled to the closest village to seek help for his injuries, but was offered no quarter, for he and his men had brought great misery upon the land. Instead, Anime was told to leave and never return, and if he did, he would be killed. So Anime, gravely injured, traveled as far as he could and stumbled upon a cave where he took refuge. He stayed there in that cave until he was of good health and began to track the creatures that attacked him. Many, many moons passed and Anime learned the ways of these wolf-like creatures, how to track them and even how to kill them. Then he eventually settled and started his family. Years passed and Anime had forgotten all about the dangers of these creatures until one day, he was summoned by the tribal elders to stand before their council. You see, while Anime and his new family were away in exile, the creatures had begun to take people from villages, killing livestock, and brought chaos upon the lands. Villagers were afraid to do daily tasks like gather wood and water, for two men could be walking in the woods together and both would not return. These creatures had spread fear among the tribal nations, a supernatural fear that brought people to their knees. After careful consideration, Anime decided to take the invitation and return to see the tribal council. But upon arrival, he was bound, tortured, and interrogated. And after being held against his will for days, he was released. That day, Anime vowed that he would never set foot in those lands again, and that one day he would seek his revenge. So he returned home, raised his two sons, teaching them the ways of the wolf, how to track them and move among them safely. And when Anime was of old age and near his death, he told his oldest son to take him to the Badlands where the creatures roam. He instructed his son to leave him there and return the following day. That night, Anime found himself surrounded by these creatures. And the next day, when his son arrived, he found nothing but his father's clothes neatly folded upon a rock. Greatly disturbed, his son returned home and grieved for his father's death for the next seven days. But on the seventh day, his father returned, covered in blood and moving nothing like an old man. Anime had made a pact with these creatures in order to exact revenge upon the tribes that had exiled him. And so began the first bloodline of skinwalkers, men who could transform and take upon the image of the wolf. Anime, filled with hate, taught this secret knowledge to its sons and they passed it down for generations. Born out of the spirit of the coyote, the deceiver who seeks to kill and destroy, these traditions are carried on to this very day.